Welcome to Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and today we have Andrea Freeman on the show, and she is a mindful business coach. This is where business owners, whether you're small or large, it doesn't have to be a large business out there, but you could be a small business, you could be a solo business owner, where it's time to actually get the coaching and the insightfulness of how to grow your business, how to grow it well, how to make it profitable, but really to truly find joy in the business and balance with the work that you're doing. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss the show. It's a pretty powerful one. And we're going to be wrapping up season five with this episode. So stay tuned. Do you have questions about Social Security? Let us help you maximize your Social Security benefits and minimize your tax obligations by clicking the link below to get your free Social Security analysis today. Welcome back to Ways to Love Your Money. We have Miss Andrea Freeman here today, and she's a mindful business coach. I can't wait for her to tell you her story and, and the great things that she's doing out there. So welcome. Uh, so happy to have you here, Andrea. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, and we're kind of spanning the country today. You're you're pretty much in uh, uh, New York State, right? You're the Hudson Valley, and, and we're here in San Diego, so it's kind of nice to bridge the gap between the country. Yeah, yeah, 3,000 miles, and yeah, it feels like we're in the same room. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? You know, virtual world has actually helped us all connect even more. Uh, so, so tell me about being a mindful business coach. You have so much you have to yeah. offer, so I really want to hear what that's all about. Yeah, so I'm a mindful business coach, and what that means is that I work with entrepreneurs around the world to help them scale their businesses to multiple six and seven figures. I primarily focus on working with service-based entrepreneurs who want to leverage their own authentic thought leadership, maybe need some help coming up with what exactly that is, and be able to step into their visibility. So I help them develop all of the mindset that's required to be able to own all of those parts of themselves and really confidently step out into a new version of themselves with their business. So let's kind of break that down a little bit. I think that uh, so many people, you know, they kind of go into the work world. And I think you shared with me a little bit about uh, what your original vision was that you were going to get a great job, you were going to, uh, you're going to get a pension, you were going to retire, and that was going to be your story. But you woke up one day and that all changed. And uh, I'd love to hear about that. But that's also, I think, where a lot of entrepreneurials come from as well, because one day they just kind of wake up and say, no, this isn't for me. How'd that work out for yeah. you? Yeah. So for me, I mean, I actually started a little baby business when I was 12 years old and I've kind of dabbled in business ownership. I've had multiple business th businesses throughout my life. But when I was 17 years old, I started a summer camp in my hometown wow. and it was a project for the Girl Scouts. I was working on my gold award, if anyone's familiar with that organization, right? So I was doing this project and I was having a ball doing it. And I decided I should probably do something similar to this because it was about time to start looking for colleges. And I really enjoyed this, but I can't do summer camp for my whole life. So what's like a real job, I asked myself, that would be something similar to this. And so for me, the immediate answer was teaching. And that really came from that I, you know, had teachers in my family. I knew people in my community who were teachers. I didn't know anybody who was a business owner. I didn't know anybody who was an entrepreneur. So the idea of like considering like didn't even occur to me to do that. But I definitely was um, raised in a family that was taught to get a job for the rest of your life. And I say that like with like a heaviness because it felt sure. very intense. Making that decision felt very significant and weighty. Mm -hmm. And I loved going to college. I loved, I mean, when you're studying something like that, you're at the forefront of education and educational theory. And that was a lot of fun. And that was very creative. But stepping out into the actual classroom could mm -hmm. not have been more different. And mm -hmm. I was immediately struck by how out of alignment being in the public school class was for me and how much I needed space to be able to be creative, to be entrepreneurial, to do these things that I didn't really fully know were present in me. And so I taught for exactly one year and then I made the big announcement to my family after they had paid for me to go to college that I wasn't going to be doing it anymore. And that felt 
intense actually to have those conversations and to let them know. But midway through that year, when I was kind of hemming and hawing, should I tell my family this? Should I not? And, you know, really kind of turning myself inside out, I just had this kind of aha moment that I deserve to be happy. And while I don't know what the next thing is that I want to create and what I'm stepping out into, I'm willing to explore it because I'm not willing to settle. Like the pension and the health insurance was not incentive enough for me to give up the possibility of a life filled with joy as opposed to someday I'll arrive at my retirement account and my pension and all of those things, right? Right. Well, I mean, that's the, you know, the the, the game of life, right? You know, there's literally a game board called life and and what they're what they kind of go through in that whole storybook is you know, get a good education so you can get a job and you want to become the doctor or the lawyer, right? And so that you have, then you get married, you have the children and then you have your car is full and then you're going through the, you know, the the little circle of life just to try and kind of end up to that ultimate game of reality, which would be, I guess, so-called retirement. Uh, but it's, it's definitely following a model. And I think that that model has changed drastically uh, probably over the last 20 plus years more so than ever because our parents, that's what they did. That's they, they got an education, they got a good job. If they were fortunate enough to have a pension, it was fantastic. But right from a very young age, we're taught about retirement, you know, which is such a foreign concept for so many countries out there that they never go into retirement. But I love the idea that you saw that creati- creative energy that you needed to expose And now you've morphed that into something even great because maybe the entrepreneur that you're working with today didn't know they were an entrepreneur and now they actually feel it and they need to see what steps to take to be able to create a successful business. That sounds like what you're doing today. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it wasn't just a leap into business coaching. There were other iterations, right? I was a celebrity event planner. Before that, I owned a catering company because I went to culinary school right after teaching. So there was still a huge evolution that happened. But I was always following that thread of fulfillment of, you know, what leads to the most joy for me, what feels right for me. And that has always led to businesses not only being fulfilling but ultimately being profitable so you know it's been it's been a fun ride so so what sparked you to get involved with business owners with business owners so when I had my um, catering company right after I had my catering company I wanted to know more about business I thought I should go for an MBA, right? Like if you want to know about business, like you should get an MBA, I thought. So I was just about to go for my MBA when I actually got asked to work for a leadership development company, one of the world's largest leadership development companies. And I learned so much about personal development and personal evolution inside of that role, which was I was a finance manager. I was part event planner. I had a lot of, you know, different roles and responsibilities in that one job. But I then got to um, step out back into business ownership after leaving that position. And that's when I started my event planning company Mm -hmm. as someone who really saw the tie between personal development Mm -hmm. and your personal evolution and the success of your business. Those two things could no longer be separate for me. Whereas before I had always dabbled in, I picked up my first personal development book when I was 12 years old. So I had had always like, yeah, who reads about meditation and mindfulness at 12? Well, (laughs) I did for some reason. (laughs) Well, you were way ahead of your time. But it was always separate. It was always just this thing to do to live a better life for me. But at a certain point, I recognized my passion for business ownership as I kept going as a celebrity event planner. And I would have business to business meetings, right, with other colleagues and people in my industry that were always about what they were doing, how they could be better as business owners, how they could be more fulfilled, how their systems and processes could be more dialed in, how they could outsource their you know, and leverage their time. I wanted so badly to bring the two together Mm -hmm. that finally people just started saying like, you should be my business coach. That's great. What a compliment. What a compliment. That's amazing. 
Uh, because I think the business owner is, uh, it can be a lonely place if they don't have the right people actually helping them grow the business. But I think you talk a lot about the balance between life, joy, business, and making it all work. So I know you've created something called Peak Performance. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So inside of my event planning company, I was doing a lot of events for really high performers, right? I was working with big corporate CEOs and red carpet celebrities. And so being surrounded by people who were performing at a really high level gave me a lot of insight into the common threads and the common themes and ways that people who are sustaining these really high performances are yeah. living their lives. Because there are people who do it for a little while and then they kind of crash and burn. But I had the the benefit and the good fortune to be able to be around people who had been doing it for quite some time and honestly still continue to do it. So at that time, it was around 2015, I actually was a new mom and I was finding myself, myself with my own scales kind of tipping, right? I had at the, up until that point found business ownership just like a lot of fun and fairly easy because I'm ambitious, I have tenacity, I'm a hard worker. These are all identities that were so yeah. deeply ingrained for me, right? And if yeah. it what didn't come naturally, I could certainly figure it out and at least work hard enough to eventually get to where I wanted to go, right? Mm -hmm. But as a new mom, all of a sudden, I was being challenged in ways that I never had been challenged. I couldn't meet the demands of this tiny little human being all the time while also satisfying everybody else's needs and demands. And it called for me to be more efficient and more effective than I had ever been in my life. And so I started to piece together a system and a way to be able to be more aligned because just having the business that was shiny and pretty and looked good, but inside felt out of alignment, inside felt like I wasn't living up to my full potential, inside mm -hmm. didn't feel like I was giving my own peak performance, mm -hmm. it was no longer acceptable. If I was going to be spending time away from that tiny little human being who I love so much and who needed me so much, I was going to have to be doing something that was incredibly rewarding and just felt as good as it looked on the outside, right? So I started to create what I call the host your life method, which is that you can choose in your business and in really any area of your life to be a guest or to be a host, right? And so we've all been a guest at a party, right? We know that we show up, we take what's offered. We don't really have a lot to do with who's invited or what food is served or what music is playing. You just kind of take what's there. And Sometimes that's amazing and sometimes it leaves a little to be desired because if we were to step into the host role, we would create something that's more our own, more authentic, more of an expression of who we are. And so that's the, uh, that's the alternative way to be in life and business. And so I vote for being a host every single day of my life uh -huh. and I want that for business owners. But mm -hmm. what it means to be a host is that you are honor your why, that you're really clear about what you do and why you do it and the way you do it, right? And that you own who you are. You don't keep any part of yourself at arm's length, that you embrace all of your gifts, that you share that with your clients, with your audience, and so that you don't feel like you're being kind of secretive or an imposter in any way in your business. And then we have thoughts about who we're being in our business, right? So the negative self-talk, the negative self-doubt, that all creeps in and we have to shift our perspective. So that's the S. And mm -hmm. then ultimately, when we go through those three steps, we end up in this place of, of a lot of fullness, of a lot to mm -hmm. offer, of a lot of gratitude, of a lot to share, as opposed to where a lot of business owners are creating business from, which is goals, which is very often looking at what we don't have, where we want to get to, that we're not there yet, right? It's mm -hmm. kind of like a, of a deficiency. But this is based on a very full and almost effervescent feeling of mm -hmm being called to share your gifts with the world. So the final step is that you take inspired action. Okay. And so tell me a little bit about inspired action then that you would have someone take when you're coaching them basically to make their, their life feel more fulfilled and in more balance. 
Yeah. So actually, I just did a training with a, a group today, and it was all about creating your own authentic thought leadership. So I feel very, very passionately that we all have our own unique perspective and our own view, right? Nobody's traveled our, our same journey through the world. So yeah. even if there are other people in our market and in our niche, they don't see the world that we do. So our own unique perspective is what differentiates us from the beginning. But when we combine that with our level of and our area of expertise, our zone of genius, if you will, and then package it in a way that's easy to remember and easy to digest, we can step out in full confidence because we own our story. It's easy. It's not like you're pretending to be somebody else. You can step out in visibility. You can share your story authentically. You can talk about why you've created the systems and processes and structures and the Mm -hmm. wins with the people that you work with and the market that you serve. And it's easy to then step into visibility whether your medium is podcasting like we're doing here or if it's going live on social media or guest blogging there's so many different avenues that you can take it but once you create that core piece of thought leadership you can scale it you can write the talk you can write the book you can do the interviews you can do the guest blogging you can you can do all the things because you've created that core asset that's going to continue to fuel your visibility that's going to continue to fill your content calendar right that's such a popular topic for entrepreneurs it's going to give you endless amounts of content and action to be taken from that place of fullness because you're so excited to share it with the world Well, I think that's a powerful message because so many times the business owner might feel like they're alone or they've been in business for quite some time and maybe there's just not that, you know, new excitement or energy like you're bringing so much energy to this conversation. And it's a powerful message because I think that the majority of business owners today um, and maybe not all the ones that you're working with, but they they're kind of uh, maybe a little bit more old school unless they're kind of newer coming into the entrepreneurial world today. And I think that that's kind of even a place that you're stepping into too. But I think the systems and procedures and the the possibilities of, of uh, let's say, technical experts or or just really getting around the, the whole, the whole um, conundrum of running a business is you want to build it for a profitability so that you actually have monies. This is a money show, a respect for money show. And and I'd love to get your perspective on um, how you feel, number one, about the area of coming from abundance, because I think that's a powerful place to come from. And then in addition, where you actually feel that you can you can grow that entrepreneur into another step because you know, the, the old school business owner would say, I'm going to build my business to get to a point so I can sell it so that I, then I can actually retire or I can have my business then pay for me. Money in business works very different than after the business is sold and then you have to make that money work for you. Um, so, so I think that there's so many different dimensions of the business owner mentality where they'll put so much more money back into the business to grow the business and to continue to make it, you know, have that momentum and energy. But then at the same time, coming from a place of that recreation, creativity is so powerful, so important, but where do you take it to that next step? And I, and I'm so curious to see, um, since COVID, I'm sure it's a different kind of business owner that's kind of grown from the ashes, if you will, the phoenix from the ashes. And, and I'd love to know your perspective on that because I think a lot of business owners out there need to kind of hear something fresh, new, and have a different perspective of how someone like you can actually be a very, very powerful person in their lives. Yeah, I love this question. It is a very powerful question. So I will say that as far as looking at money in our businesses and really looking at anything, I really look at it from an energetic perspective. And I joke around sometimes that I help people balance the to do, right? All the things that there are to do. There are so many things to do in our businesses with the woo woo because (laughs) Uh, you know, there's room for all of it. And I think in the past, it was like you could have somebody who was into the mindfulness and the mindset stuff, and it was all just that. Who am I being? What am I looking at, like doing in my business, right? Or you could have somebody who was strategy and it was only focusing on the tactics and the systems and the. 
And there is a really healthy balance of the two. And I think quite honestly that we need those. Like we have a left and a right brain. We we work in these spaces and there are so many nuances to how we operate that I feel like we have to tend to the more holistic business owner. So for people who are open to this conversation, it is definitely looking at everything in our businesses from the position of energetics and um, receiving. And I talk a lot about the art of receiving and this ties into abundance 100%. So when we are looking at, let's say we want to be earning more money in our businesses, right? Because right now we're earning enough to put back into it, but we're not earning enough to, to you know, to, to pay ourselves, right? That has a kind of energy to it, right? And we can very often get into a kind of spinning, almost downward spiral of there's not enough, there's not enough, there's not enough. Mm-hmm. Now, chances are I didn't put together there's not enough money when I became a business owner. It's probably a historical conversation that I've either inherited from somebody else in my life or, you know, the media or there are a lot of places we can pick up money conversations. And quite honestly, a lot of them aren't really that empowering. So (laughs) I help people go to work on their conversation about money and about receiving in all areas. Sometimes money is such a charged topic that we can't work on that one first. So I look at where people are open to or blocking and not open to receiving Mm -hmm in general, right? Because when we create an energetic shift and we create an opening for more abundance, we create an opening for more abundance, not just in that one area, we create an opening for abundance in all areas of our lives. Mm-hmm. So let's say, for example, that somebody wants to be earning more revenue, but the the money conversation, like it's just too charged for them. They can't go to work on it. We'll look at where they're not receiving other things that they are wanting to also receive, right? And so you know you have a block when it comes to receiving when you feel kind of a charger or resistance to asking for the help that would make a difference in your business, right? Like not necessarily considering hiring the VA or the part-time employee or the whoever you need to be able to up-level your productivity to be able to fully serve the clients, right? Mm-hmm. If you're saying things like, I'm so overwhelmed, I can't take care, I have too many clients, I can't, right? But yet you want more clients, you're sending out a mixed message, right? Like you're kind of blocking the flow of more clients by constantly telling the universe that you're overwhelmed and you can't take care of what you have. So it's not going to want to inundate you, right? But when you kind of can expand the conversation and allow yourself to receive the support and get that you're here to thrive, like we're all here to thrive in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And this can sometimes be a little bit challenging for people, but quite honestly, like not a single one of us is so special that we've been singled out by the universe that's like everyone's here to thrive except you. (laughs) But not a single one of us. Like we're all here to thrive. So when I get that we're all here to thrive and when I get it like really at a soul like of deep, deep level, Mm -hmm. and then I can look at like, well, I must have put something together. Then that that conversation starts to have a little less charge because I can recognize that it's something I chose, that it's Mm -hmm. something I put together. And if I put it together, I can start to break it down. I can start to deconstruct it. I can start to offload the things that are not serving me anymore and upgrade those narratives, upgrade those conversations and choose empowering conversations that serve me. So we do all kinds of work, whether it's, um, you know, I'm a certified hypnotherapist, whether it's really that deep level of work, or if it's as easy as like looking at and working with some affirmations and doing some journaling and looking where I put those stories together, you know, doing the morning pages, doing the, you know, offloading of those stories and being able to create new narratives. There's a lot of different ways we can come at it, but ultimately the work is for entrepreneurs who really get that the money is in the mindset and that who they're being is the access to being able to up-level their business. Well, I think that's a powerful message and we could probably talk all day long because this is exciting stuff. And I think that, uh, um, not just business owners need to hear this. I think even people in general need to hear this because I think uh, so much comes from our own personal anxieties and our own hangups on money. And um, 
quite honestly, I mean, that that's a whole other pathway down another or another rabbit hole, but I think an important conversation to have too. Um, in, in wrapping up, because we're, we're just about out of time, you have a podcast that's also a mastermind. And I'd love for you to share a little bit with that um, with us. And, and do you have to have clients that are, you know, in your neighborhood or can you have clients that are virtual? Yeah. So um, my podcast is The Upleveled Entrepreneur, and that's for anybody who just wants more of what we've given them a taste of here in this conversation. And if anybody is interested as a business owner in further stepping into their visibility, that authentic thought leadership that I was talking about, and wanting to get started, like figuring out what the first steps would be to doing something like guesting on a podcast per week or going live with co-collaborators, Um, I offer what I call the Podcast Powerhouse Masterclass. And that is just a live three-day training. It happens inside my private Facebook group. And it's available for anybody who joins the the Facebook group. So it's a really fun place to look at exploring, stepping into heightened levels of visibility so that you can take your business to be able to create that true entrepreneurial freedom, right? Like the money, the location, the, the peace of mind, all of the things that we go into business for and then our businesses start running us. I'm, I'm interested in peeling back that conversation so that we can be in the driver's seat and say how business ownership is going to go for us. Well, I think that's a key component because we need to have all the resources in the planet to be able to create that success. And most business owners, they're wanting to start a business to create wealth. They're wanting to start a business to to have something that they can be proud of and, and to build. And um, it takes a different breed to be able to do all those things and make it a success. So um, I want to say thank you so much for being here. This has been a pleasure to have you. I know we're reaching across the country here, but it's uh, been well worth it. And thanks for coordinating your time with us and uh, uh, any information that you can share with us that we can add into this podcast we'll make sure that people uh find you you know we want them to find you because that's a that's an incredible resource so your relationship with money is so important stay tuned we'll be right back have you gotten a copy of our book yet if you haven't wealth by design is available on our website elizabeth with an s dawson.com we'd love for you to get a copy today didn't you love the energy that Andrea has? I mean, she's amazing as a as a um, really as a coach. Being mindful for business owners, I think, is so powerful. But I think business owners, just like myself, we need that cheerleader, if you will, to keep us on track with the balance, the joy of life, and also to know when to pivot and do things differently. The analytics are very important too, but I think it's the creative side of our business entrepreneurial spirit that people need to constantly check back in with. You know, our relationship with money is so important when it comes to building our business. We can build it. We love to talk about building businesses. We love to grow and build money and build wealth. But at the end of the day, not many people like to talk about money. So your relationship with money is just as important as building the business and the value of the business, that shiny, beautiful object, because your relationship with money is the ability for you to create real wealth and keep that because I bet you anything out there is that you're great at making money, but you might not be so great at keeping it. So how do we make sure that that actually happens as part of the journey of building your business? I want to say thank you again for being a listener of the Ways to Love Your Money show. This is the end of uh, season five. We'll be back in the future with season six and maybe more, but we want to make sure that you know how much we appreciate you. We would love your comments down below with any questions or gosh, let us know if you like the show, everything about it. Share this show with a business owner or uh, someone that you feel that would really benefit from this because I think that is how we're going to continue to conquer our mission to educate as many people as possible in this world to have a better relationship with money, build a better business, and build a much more prosperous future. So thanks again. We'll talk soon. information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. 
Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.